Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Behind me on the screen, you're going to see an uh, unveiling of our new website. And uh, again, behind the scenes, Mr. Dykstra back there has been working very tirelessly on this. Uh, he's got lots of input from Kevin and uh, myself. And so if you want to just keep up the speed on all these things uh, has to do with Life Church, that would be great. Um, Matthew, is there anything you want to point out or that they should know about this, uh, this webpage? Well, with the weather, um, if you can't make it, you can immediately go to our website at lifechurchoshawa.com and click on Life Church Live, and you can, through YouTube, see exactly the service live, what's going on. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And it starts at 1045 every Sunday. What about my water bottle? How delayed is this? Is this uh, a, a little bottle? delayed. Yeah, let's, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can donate or give your tithes and offerings online. Okay. okay. And uh, also life group information. If uh, you don't receive any emails, the information will be here on the page. And each, each of the team members have a, uh, a, their own email you can catch them at. Cool. I just want to showcase that you're awesome, yeah. Matthew. Give him a big hand. Give him a big hand. Awesome. So uh, you may have uh, given an excuse for people to stay home on Sundays, but we'll have to talk about that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's great that they can join us live, and uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this evolves. So don't let's, forget let's, your Monday Minutes on there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, you yeah, don't get really it. Cares about that Monday Minute thing, and I'm just, you know. <laughs> yeah, Monday Minute is always on there as well, and uh, so make sure you look at that because that's our information. It keeps you up to date every week. Okay. And I think we have some messages on there and things like that. Not that anybody wants to listen to me say anything twice. Uh, in case you miss it, it's there. If you want to listen to Krista twice, that's a, uh, I would encourage that. You can also get it on iTunes and your Android device. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, way beyond, uh, way beyond my pay grade. Let's pray, and we're going to kick it off this morning. I'm really excited about this morning because I, I feel like... Um, God has been waiting to tell you something, and, it, and he's got a message for you this morning and for me. And, and I'm grateful that God shared it with me, and I want to be able to pass it on to you. And I think it's, it is life-changing. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son. And we accept that love, and we accept what you're doing in our lives. And, and uh, we just pray that for the rest of the service that you would just be with us as we honor you, honor you with our worship, our, our, our giving, our fellowship, our interaction, and uh, help us to be receptive this morning. I pray for those that are traveling to gather with us this morning. You would keep them safe as they travel in your name. Amen. Thank you. All right, kids, come on down here. Come on down here. Number one. Way to go. Here we go. Put your hands in there. Come on, Jackson. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much his word, his go to word. Okay, what are we going to say on three? Snow? Yeah, snow. Ready? One, two, three, snow! to bargaining. Well, uh,
happy Valentine's week, everyone. Happy Valentine's week. And, uh, you know, I celebrate Valentine's every day, you know, at my house. So uh, we don't really celebrate Valentine's uh, that much. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, that's an excuse, actually, really. Uh, but, you know, yeah, yeah Jen's uh, out right now, I guess, not to hear this. But um, <clears throat> I... Uh, I just wanted to say to Krista, too, that uh, thank you so much for kicking off our series in the fashion that you did last week. It was great. You know, from what I remember through my coughing and hacking and all that is that, you know, you, uh, you talked about small things with great love. You talked about kingdom principles, first being last and being a servant and, you know, the rich becoming poor. So uh, that's kind of how we started off the series. And uh, we're going into this uh, series. This will be our second week, obviously. And the concept of the series really is this. It's that we're able to have great impact on the people around us just by doing small things with great love. You know, that simple, but it's so profound. And, and not easy to do every day. And to kind of stay in that zone and that mode of doing things with great love. And, you know, the, the concept is, you know, when we are something or we do something, God's love is manifested in a certain way. I think it's a it's powerful series, powerful concept. And, uh, you know, in preparing for this morning, you know, I had really uh, felt impacted by something that I felt that God was putting inside me. And, and also by all the stuff that was happening around me this week. Lots was going on around me, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and uh, I really felt impacted by this. And, and this was the sense I was getting, or God was trying to show me, and it was this. You know I love you, right? You know I love you, Randy, right? You, you know I, I love your family, right? You, you remember that, right? And it, and it was one of those things, it was a, it was a struggle, it was like... Almost, I almost felt like, you know, the, the Peter thing. You know, feed my sheep. You know, do you love me? Feed my sheep. You know, I'm like, ah, oh, I do. I'm just, I'm just having, I'm having a struggle. You, you caught me. And it was like, you know I love you. You know I love you. And, I, and I, in order for me to help others, and this was important for me and it's important for you, in order for me to help others, I myself must connect with the love that God has for me and for my family. It's the, it's the basis of my existence, really. It, it is my strength, God's love. It, it's just that simple. And, it's, and Krista, this was not part of our original series that we put together, so forgive me. Um, I just can't, we're just going to slide this one in here uh, this morning. Um, but this, this is so, so big on my heart and on my life. It was just this overwhelming sense that not only I, but you as well, many of us lose sight of God's great love for us and how immense and how huge that that love is for us. And, you know, I'm guilty of losing sight of it. You know, that's, that's my journey right now. I, I, I lose sight sometimes of God's great love for me. And, and I, I feel, you know, that I, I leak out his goodness. I just... It just leaks out of me. And I feel like I'm not containing all of it the way it could be. And uh, you know what? Circumstances in life squeeze it out of you. And uh, then you can try and force something. You know, I don't know if you get into these situations where you're forcing your faith almost. You're forcing your faith to make it work. When God has said, whoa, 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 you, you know I, I love you. You know I love you. Just ch chill out here, and we're going to work through this with my love. And you, you, but you force it. You feel, you feel empty. You feel you've leaked out something. You feel, you feel you've leaked out God's goodness, and you know you get it's kind of just gone, and, and you feel empty. And then, what do you do with that emptiness? I know what my tendency is. It, it might be different than yours, but my tendency is to fill it with busyness and stuff. My tendency can be uh, to be insecure about, you know, my, my faith or insecure about something and fill it with pride, maybe, to overcome it. Uh, again, I'm just sharing my tendencies uh, in my, my journey and my struggle. And, and I, I kept coming back to this all week. 
is that there's, there's something to be realized about how awesome his love is for us. And that's how it fixes these leaks inside of us and the emptiness inside of us. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 100 years or, you know, 100 days or zero days. This message this morning is for you. It's, it's for me. It, it's changed me this week. And, and I'm trying to hold on to it. And not in a struggling sense anymore, but trying to just be and allow it to happen. I know you know this scripture verse, but I, I want you to turn your Bible to John 3.16. John chapter 3, verse 16, and I know you know it, we all know it probably, but I wanted to slow it down and look at it for a second. We won't stay here very long. This is something that I know and that I've realized, you know, in my life, and I've kind of quoted it to myself a thousand million times. But I want you to see one small little word. Because I know this to be something that I need to realize from John 3.16. Somebody read just John 3.16 real quickly, or quote it, whatever you want to do. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God, for God in my version, my version it says, it says God for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved me that he gave. And there's this volume to this that I really skipped over because it's just a little word, so, so what? But for God so loved the world. This, I don't know, I, it, maybe this doesn't, you know, revolutionize how you think about John 3.16, but it did for me this week, so I'm going to talk about it for a minute or two. And that is, he's so, there's so much volume to his love that I need to help him by giving him room or space to make that volume increase. You know, there's, there's something about this word that struck me to be so very important. That God so loved me. That God so loved us and our world. He so loves you that he gave. He gave. And continues to give. He chose you. He chose to love me. You know, which is really kind of crazy because I, I'm his, his beloved. beloved. You're, You're his beloved. beloved. Like, God's beloved. And I often kind of think of this in terms of the future version of myself. Once I kind of grasp it all. You know, the better version of me, he loves that one. <laughs> he, he loves that, the, the better version of Randy Gill. He, that's the one he's really in love with. Apparently not. You know, and to stay in context, he, he, he so loved me the way I am. He even loves the now version of me. <laughs> and, and I'm just... Blown away by it again. I, again, I, I just am thankful for his grace and for his love and for his mercy. But he loves the broken version, the broken down version of me. He loves the broken down version of my family. He loves the broken down version of my circumstance uh, that I may be going through. It, he, he loves the broken down version of me, how I'm reacting to it even. Again, in, in perspective, I, I feel like he doesn't like that about me. He doesn't like the way I react. But he loves me. He so loves me. He so loves you. And I, I, I want him to know that I'm grateful for that this morning. 
Sometimes I don't feel it. I don't know it. And I need to be reminded. And I need to move into this idea that I'm convinced of it. And that becomes my, my habit of being convinced. I am convinced. Convinced of what? Romans chapter 8. Turn to Romans chapter 8. I'm convinced. And I, and I think this is important for us going forward in this series. Because if we're not convinced of this one thing, we can't do all these other great, awesome things that comes along with it. And I know it's not easy. Every day, you and I go through different things. And there's going to be some days, Vanessa, that you're happy, and I'm going to be super sad that same day. And then we'll switch. You're going to be sad, and I'm going to be happy. But at the same moment, can we both be convinced? Can I be convinced that God will change the circumstance? Or I'll make it through that piece of my journey. I'm convinced of this. I'm convinced in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, that it says for me to do this, to be convinced of this, I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else, nor any other part of creation will be able to separate me, separate you from the love that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Am I convinced of that? Can you be convinced of it? Can you be convinced of it even when life sucks? Can you be convinced of it when everything else is a mess? Can you be convinced of it? Well, no, Randy, sometimes I can't. That's okay. God loves that too. God so loves you no matter how you're responding. But he's wanting to help you with your inner man be able to contain more of it. And on our journey towards Christ, on our journey towards faith and renewal, there's this convincing. Am I convinced of it? I want to ask you a couple questions. I'd like to get a little bit of feedback. Because I think we all can learn from one another and help each other see differently. I got, I got two, two questions, questions for you. For you. It's, it's really the really same, same question. question. How do you, how do feel, you feel God's, God's love? love? How, how does how that does work that for you? How do you to feel God's, God's love? love? Or, or, or is, is it important for you to feel God's, God's love? love? Or, or how, how, and then my second, second question is part of the same, same question. question is, is, how do you how know He loves you? How do you know? How do you feel? What goes on inside of you to engage with you? Give me a little bit of feedback. What comes to mind? How do you know? How do you feel? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry. How does that work for you? Yeah. It seems I don't feel opposite of God's love when I don't focus on it. Out of nowhere, I don't know that I feel God's love. Interesting, but when I look to him and when I focus on it, when I'm when I engage him, whether it's in prayer or whatever, when I'm talking to him, and I admit what's going on, when the truth is in it, even that seems to be what I feel about. That's good. Someone else. I just feel it's an unconditional love, uh, that he loves us all the time, whether we feel it or not, that he's always there, always looking out for us, always making sure we're okay. And there's something inside you that causes you to believe that? Is that what it yeah. is? Somebody else? Don't scratch your head, Craig, or I'll hit you. <laughs> Go ahead, Kev. Just like, how did you know? How do you know? Like, 
stole my answer. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that one before. Yeah. Because yeah. you read it. Because <laughs> you because you read it. Because when, when you when you spoke about it, it was like, oh yeah. It's kind of like his answer. You, 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 you've, you've heard it, you've connected to it. I've heard it a million times, but thanks for mentioning it. You connect uh, to it. Then you're like, oh yeah, he, he really loves me. Oh yeah, it's, it's true. I think I feel maybe, um, you know, after I've, I've maybe done something wrong and I come to God and, and uh, you know, it's always that confession. Why do, you, why do you confess? Why do you ask for forgiveness? Is it for God? Because he doesn't know. No, it's for you to bring light to it, right? So yeah. when I bring light to it, I just feel kind of God, you know, it's like, wow, he accepts me even though I mess up. And and he's not there going to put a hammer on me, but, mm -hmm. you know, he wants to straighten me out and, yeah. and, and love me anyway. So yeah. I just feel like when you're reflecting in the past um, and good things that seem good at the time lead to way better things you didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. But then bad things, sometimes the worst things, and after a while, if you look back and if, if enough times went by, you think, wow, it would change a thing, but this led to something that you wouldn't want to change. It's hard to see and feel in that, isn't it? And that's this convincing thing. You know, I, to be honest, there's times where I, I totally forget or don't engage, you know, or don't focus, maybe. Maybe I lose my focus. Yeah. Any other thoughts or comments? Yeah? Sometimes other people can remind us. That's good. Like, you can run into some, some situation or circumstance with somebody, and it can just kind of like, it can pull you over. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That it can hit you where you stand. Like, it just basically shows you in that instant something about yourself. You reflect, and it puts you in your place. Mm -hmm. Where you stand in God's love. Yeah, that's but it's somebody else who's actually echoing that. Right? Yeah, there being a reflection of his love really. Shining shining on that, yeah. It's good. So it, it seems to me that we're built in a way that is meant to contain this love. Right? Like that's that's our structure, it's our makeup. We're, we're made of body, we're made of soul, we're made of spirit. And all that full package is meant to contain it. You know, but for me, it's, it's like this, this illustration, you know, if I, you know, had a, you know, a tarp and here I would probably be holding this bucket and fill it with water, just envision it with me, with all kinds of holes, just kind of leaking this goodness, this water, this life out. And this is, you know, really God's love being poured into us daily, always, often. But it seems that it's leaking out. And I, I believe that this morning God wants to help us to, you know, patch that bucket and understand that you will leak some of those out. But as we're able to commune with Him, as we're able to get close enough, our container gets a little bit more stable, if you will, that it adds to it, and it contains. And we're talking about small things with great love, but, you know, when you're holding your bucket, you know, your, your love factor kind of has been leaked out, it's hard to spill over on others' goodness. Right? In order to do small acts of kindness and, and, and good things for others, you know, it, it, it'd be great to be able to take that bucket and have it as overflow and spill on other people. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 3. This has been my prayer this week. It's prayer for myself and prayer for you. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to read the first couple verses, then I'm going to ask you to read the next couple ones. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. For this very reason, this reason of fullness, this reason of love, this reason of containing it and overflowing it, I kneel before the Father, from whom His whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. 
the basis to be able to contain or receive all of this love. You know, Paul is saying to the Ephesians, I'm praying for you. And, and, you know, I'm kneeling before the Father. I'm humbly coming. And sometimes that's for us when we realize that our bucket is empty and we're maybe not convinced or have lost sight of love, this humbling and bowing down. Someone read verse 16 for me, please. Super key verse. Next slide, please, Matthew. Verse 16. Someone read it. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. What's happening here? This is, this is the beginning to what I'm talking about now. Now we're kind of moving into something that's key to being able to contain, be able to receive. I pray that out of his glorious riches, that what? That he what? That he may what do what? Strengthen. Do what? I can't hear you. Strengthen. I can't hear you. Yeah. Strengthen. Yeah, yeah. Use your strength, strong voice that he may strengthen you. He may strengthen your inner being through the power of his Holy Spirit. Yeah, it, it's him. It, it's his Holy Spirit. It's his strength for your soul. It's, it, you know, to help us because we're broken and we leak his love. And, and oftentimes we get caught up in trying to fix some of these like symptoms that happen in our lives or, or you know, our, our faith, you know, or um, things creep in and we have fear and things kind of take over and we try to attack that or look at that symptom and, and deal with it. God would want me to deal with that. It, it's kind of like how, what I'm facing right now with being, you know, sick and fighting this cold and... Uh, this infection and all that kind of stuff. I'm dealing with the runny nose and the scratchy throat, and you know I'm just popping home the the Tylenol, cold and sinus, and just you know I, I last night I I even was like you know I'm not going to take any of this stuff you know, and, and and by the time I got to bed I was like oh, I better attack that symptom you know so I can sleep. Same way in our relationship with God. We oftentimes will kind of focus on a symptom that's going on or something that's happening when in actual fact it's the root, it's the container, it's the capacity to have his love. And sometimes we diminish that when we don't fix or, or go after the inner being. You know, for me, maybe, maybe it's just going to the root of my immune system. Maybe I should eat more vegetables. You know, maybe I should exercise more. Maybe I should rest. Spiritually, it's the same thing. Finding your core, finding the strength for your inner man, then your soul and your body and everything kind of lines up. It's not all leaky and weird. Yeah, yeah, there's the circumstances, there's all these things, and there's crap and garbage going on, and how can I trust God or have faith in God right now when all this is going on? I'm convinced inside. Somehow in my inner man is able to contain this still. My inner man. And my prayer this morning is for strengthen your inner man, to strengthen my inner man. Someone read verse 17, please, for me. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love. Now we're kind of settling into our bucket here. Paul has given us some great instruction that you'd be rooted and what? Established. Or the literal translation is grounded. In what? 
In what? Someone said it. Is that you, Michelle? What in what? Yeah. In love. For God so, so loves you. When everything around again is in upheaval, we need his love to ground us. Otherwise, our emptiness gets the best of us, doesn't it? Well, it does, it does for me. And I identify with that for where fear creeps in, depression creeps in, worry creeps in, pride, selfishness, it all kind of creeps in. But can you be convinced? Can you be rooted enough to be unshakable? Oh, Randy, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's too much for me right now. That's okay, because in your brokenness, roots can still go out. You can still find it. You'll find it. You'll find love. You'll connect to it. Be convinced of it. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be connected to it. Verse 18, somebody read verse 18 for me. May have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Uh, My prayer for you, my prayer for me, is that you'll have capacity to grasp. Grasp what? What are we talking about today? Michelle? Grasp. Grasp it. <laughs> I feel like it's slipping through my fingers, Randy. You don't, you don't get it. I don't even know where God is. You will find it. I promise you. And my prayer is that you'll be able to grasp it somehow. Maybe someone comes alongside. You find God in, in your humility. You find God in focus. You find your grasp that you'd be able to grasp it. You'd be able to grasp it. And the depth and the breadth of it. Somebody read verse 19 for me, please. Know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now we're right down to the bottom. What is it that you need to be strengthened for? You need to be strengthened. We need to pray for God to strengthen us. You need to pray for the person beside you. I need to pray for the person beside you. I need to pray for myself. We need to connect. And our prayer is that we would be strengthened for what? Strengthen to what? To know what? Michelle? Yeah. To know love, and that, that love is what? Add to it there. A love that what? That what? Surpasses knowledge. Okay, so, so Paul's on to something here. <clears throat> I don't know if you're picking it up or not. Pick up what he's throwing down. He's better at it than I am. At the end of the day here now, in order for this fullness to be working, there's this knowing, this love. My prayer and revelation for myself, my prayer and revelation for you and for me is that you would know it. You would know that that love surpasses all knowledge. All that. Randy, I just don't get it. I pray that you'll be able to grasp it because you will know. You'll know that you know. I think Tabitha said, you know, maybe eventually, you know, or someone said, as time, maybe it was you, Shane, as time goes on, you'll look back and say, that was God's love that I held on to. I didn't even know it at the time, but now I know, and I'm convinced. And that will bring fullness. So are, are you sure right now that Christ is madly in love with you? Be sure of it. I pray that you would be sure of it. That you'd be filled to the full measure. John 15 verse 9 is, real quickly just says, 
You know, the Father loved the Son, and the Son so loved you, now remain in love. Remain in it. Stay in it. Do your best just to stay in it. Let God work on that inner man because he so loves you. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to pray. I think you know what my prayer is this morning. And uh, it's, it's for that strengthening of the inner man. It's this knowledge, this knowing, this grasping, this allowing my inner man to be healed and taken care of with love. See, uh, this morning as we, as we bow, that's maybe where we begin, just in focus and in humility. Say to say, God, you know what? I, I kind of don't really know, or I kind of am losing sight, or I'm losing my grasp on it. I pray, God, for every individual in this room that is experiencing that, that you would quicken them in their spirit. That they would grasp. They would know that below there's this rootedness. It's your love. Your love never fails us. Your love sustains us. And my prayer this morning is that you would strengthen us in our inner man. Strengthen us with your love. This morning, I, I can't fix you. Nor do I want to fix you. Because you remember, I'm, I need fixing. I'm broken. I'm not in a place to do that for you this morning. Because we're broken and we leak. I need help myself to know his love and to be able to contain it. But I am in a position this morning to help you find the strength to connect with the source. I am in a position to encourage you this morning that if you reach out, that he will reach out to you as well in your inner man and strengthen you. Maybe help plug some of those holes and fix up that container. You can contain more of his love so there's not as much room for other things to fill that emptiness or that brokenness or that hurt or that pain. In our series, God, as you're taking us through this journey, may we remember that you so, or you so love us. You're, you are in crazy love with us. Help us to connect. I don't know how it's going to start for you or me today, but I want to just bow. And, you know, maybe you want to kneel where you are. Maybe you want to sit. Maybe you want to stand. Maybe you want to put a hand on a shoulder beside you.